What's up? Today we're actually going to go over reasonable suspicion one more time because most of the time we're encountering police officers and they're saying, oh, I have reasonable suspicion. So that allows for a investigation to be done. So suspicion. That. What's suspicious? Filming our building. That's suspicious? Yes, it is. Is that a misdemeanor or a felony? No, nope. it's just suspicious. That's all. Okay, well, you can't detain me for being suspicious. Okay, you have to articulate a crime I've committed, about to commit, or I am going to commit. I just have to have reasonable suspicion. Not to detain me. I don't have to have probable cause. Cause. Not to detain me, sir. Yes, I do. Okay. Well, you're making an illegal detainment. I'm telling you that right now. Put your hands out of your pocket for me. What they failed to realize is the fact that reasonable suspicion of a crime or of criminal activity, those are the things that allow for an investigation. The cases that we're going to go over today are Mallory v. United States, 354 U.S., 449, 454, 1957. The police may not arrest upon mere suspicion, but only on probable cause. Again, probable cause can only be found when it deals with a crime. And as we discussed in United States v. So Colo 490 US 1 1989 probable cause requires a fair probability that contraband or evidence of a crime will be found. And the whole point of making sure that reasonable suspicion is done with a crime or criminal activity is what then allows them to remain within their fiduciary duty. Because what we're encountering is a lot of people they're using the words reasonable suspicion and forgetting the rest of the statute that allows for them to investigate. And I'm going to close today real quick with Brenniger v. United States. The Supreme Court defines probable cause as where the facts and circumstances within the officer's knowledge and of which they have reasonable, trustworthy information are sufficient in themselves to warrant a belief by a man of reasonable caution that a crime is being committed. What that entails is when you ask an officer a question. Well, you suspect me of a crime that I've committed? We don't know. We well, I don't know is not an adequate response. It's not articulation. And if they can't articulate you the crime, any detention for something that has nothing to do with probable cause of a crime is illegal. And they'll try things like, oh, well, you need to understand. The fact is, if you are trained improperly, what does that have to do with me? Remember, reasonable suspicion of a crime do not allow for short statutes to be brought into effect for these investigations. If the police officer chooses to ignore the rest of the statute, remind them there is something that allows them to stay within their fiduciary duty to the public because they are the public servants. And if they choose not to do their job, taking these guys to court for not doing it properly. Until next time.